Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video, which is a little run through of some new in bits and pieces from Mango for the autumn winter season. So I'd like to thank Mango for partnering up with me on today's video. And basically I'm just gonna run through my little rail of goodies here and take you guys through why I've picked each of these items and also a few little styling tips as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and get stuck straight in. So my first item, is this grey wool blend coat. So as you can see, it is a belted wrap coat and I must admit, I do really like this style of coat. I just find their movement is very fluid. I think that they hang nicely and they drape well and they also look great over slightly chunkier knits as well as something a little bit thinner like a basic cashmere underneath. Now I picked the grey option but it does also come in a really beautiful shade of camel. So if you've perhaps been after that coat by the curated, this potentially is a slightly more affordable option if that one is out of your price range. So this is $119.99. It is a wool blend coat, so it's 54% wool, and it does feel really nice. And it actually looks very premium. Now I know for $119.99 it is slightly higher price point than what you might expect from brands like Mango on the high street. However, this is, I'm not actually sure it's if it's called a premium line, but it is from their more premium collection. It's just a beautiful style very minimalistic, very basic. It would be very work appropriate. It would look really chic over a pair of tailored trousers or a pencil dress if you feel like you have to wear something like that for work. But it also works equally as well if you're a bit of a minimalist like me and you just wear basic cashmere and a pair of jeans and boots throughout the autumn winter months. Now in terms of size, because I often find wrap coats a little bit difficult for sizing, I'm actually wearing this in a size medium and I would be a UK size 10. Um, I'm five foot nine as well, just for those of you who perhaps are new. So that just gives you a little gauge in terms of length on me. I would say this is a really good length. Of course, if you're a little bit shorter than five nine, then it's gonna come up a little bit longer on you. But this for me would be the perfect kind of length for this style of coat. Right, moving on to item number two. And I have another piece of outerwear here. This one is a slightly more structured coat. So if perhaps you've already got a wrap coat and you just want something slightly different style, this is a nice little alternative. It's very smart, this one. Now on the website, this color is described as coffee. I don't drink coffee, I'm a tea drinker, but this to me looks like a very weak coffee. I would describe this color as being taupe. So as I've just touched on, it is a more tailored style. It's double breasted, got these two patch pockets here which I actually haven't undone yet they're still stitched up sometimes I like to leave them stitched up because otherwise I feel tempted to put things in the pocket and it actually distorts the shape so that's a little tip if you have a tailored coat like this I know it's really handy to be able to slip your phone or if you live in London your wallet with your oyster card into your pocket but it actually does distort and misshapes the shape of the coat so sometimes it's a good idea to leave those just sewn up now this is a another wool blend coat. This one is slightly less of a wool content though, it's 30%. Admittedly, it doesn't actually feel as soft as this one. Uh, this one obviously has more wool in it, um, but it does feel nice. It feels a good quality. It feels a decent weight. It doesn't feel too heavy, but it also doesn't feel too light. And it definitely feels warm. I wouldn't have said, this is very dependent on the country that you live in. I wouldn't have said that it would be a proper winter coat. We're talking those months that everyone hates, January and February, they are the coldest months here in London. And I'd probably need to upgrade to something a little bit more substantial during those months. But definitely all the way up to Christmas time, I think this would be perfect kind of coat for that kind of climate. So this coat is $79.99, slightly lower price point to this one, but that's simply due to the slightly lower content of wool, which is in here. Again, wearing this one in a size medium, and I'd say that's kind of perfect, especially just with a thinner knit underneath. I would potentially size up to a large even, just because of the arms if I were gonna wear a chunkier knit underneath, but in all honesty, I think with this kind of coat, I would just stick to a basic cashmere underneath. Moving on to item number three, and it is my third and final piece of outerwear, or it's at least my third and final coat. 
we do still have some blazers to come, obviously, because I know the hill and I love my blazers. Now I picked this up because I am a little bit of a minimalist and I do tend to go for very basic styles. So this was just something which I feel can add a little bit of detail because we've got these buttons and because it is a little bit more bold, I think this is also a coat which works really well when it's actually done up because this is how the coat is supposed to be because of all these buttons, the way they're placed. So we've got three buttons here which work as the closure and then one popper. I'm not a massive fan of the popper, but it does have a function to it. This for me is probably a slightly more dressier, smarter coat. I don't think this for me would be an everyday coat just because it is a little bit more dressier, but I do love it. It's definitely got a very designer feel to it. Again, it is another wool blend. And like the last coat, it is 30% wool. And this one is actually 89.99. So 10 pounds more than this coffee coat here. But I think that is just down to the design element. In terms of styling, this is definitely gonna be an all black kind of situation. I think you could definitely add a pop of red in there if you were, you know, not adverse to color. I'm not the best person to talk about colour, <laughs> as you can see, as the evidence suggests. But yeah, I think for me, this is going to be definitely adding a touch of detail to a very black outfit. Right, now we've got coats done. Let's get onto the blazers because I have got some corkers to show you here, some absolute beauties. So this one is actually one of Mango's hero products for this season. I hadn't realised that, but I've now, since getting this, spotted it across all their campaigns. And I've also seen quite a lot of this over on Instagram. Now this actually does have a matching skirt and I've seen it worn with a basic black, it might not be cashmere, but with a basic black sort of sweater underneath, with the skirt and then with a pair of I don't know, maybe like chunkier biker boots or a lace-up boot or even like a Chelsea boot I think could work and it just looks awesome. Now what I love most about this is the shape and what I mean by the shape is that it's collarless so there's no collar and no lapel as you can see it's literally goes slightly higher up at the neck here and then it comes down and it literally just falls straight into the main part of the jacket. So it's single breasted. Um, and I just think that this style looks incredibly premium. There's a few designers who are using this shape in their outerwear at the moment, and it looks stunning. I just think it's something a little bit different because we're all used to seeing slightly chunkier lapels on outerwear. But I just think that this is very classic and very minimal, and it looks very chic. So in terms of price, this blazer is $69.99. But there is, again, a wool content in here. So it's 22% wool. And it actually has a really nice texture to it. It's a very, very Chanel-esque kind of boucle tweed effect to the jacket. And I actually think that's something that Mango is really good at. And it's why Mango is one of the few high street brands that I still shop with. Because you can go in there and you can still find products which have a much better quality than what you'd expect from the high street in general. Um, so I'm wearing this one in a size 38, just in case anyone is curious for sizing. I'd say it comes up true to size. I've got enough room in here just with the slimmer knit on underneath. I'd say you'd only really need to size up if you wanted it super, super oversized. Onto blazer number two, and this one again, very Chanel vibes. I've clearly, you know, gone for a certain mood, haven't I? And um, so this one, again, is a very similar kind of boucle tweed kind of fabric. But this, and I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but it does have a lurex thread that runs through the fabric. I think if I look closely, it's kind of airing on the side. It's actually a black lurex thread, but as it catches the light, it does have slightly more of a silver tone to it rather than a gold. The buttons are also a very, very pale gold, so they're not that golden gold. They almost have a slight silvery shimmer to them as well. So just something to bear in mind if, like me, you do wear a lot of gold tone jewellery or maybe you have gold tone hardware on your bag. They are gold, but because they're so pale, they look a bit more silver. It's a really nice blazer. It is fully lined, but it is also quite lightweight. I wouldn't have said it's something that would be 
the best option for day to day. This I actually got to wear to my friend's dinner. She's having a divorce dinner and I thought this would look really nice over a basic little sort of lace trimmed cami with a pair of jeans and a pair of heeled boots. So this for me is a slightly more of an evening option for blazers, but it would also work, I think, in an office if you work in that kind of environment as well. Add something a little bit more chic with a little bit of detail and also this kind of textured effect as well. Oh, one more thing to know. This is also another jacket which has a matching skirt to it. And again, it looks awesome. I've seen it on the website, they've done it up and she's actually got nothing on, the model has got nothing on underneath. So this is all sort of bare skin. She's got, I think, a statement necklace. In fact, it might even be this necklace that I've got on. And then she's got the skirt on and that once more looks wicked. Right, now I'm gonna move on to tops now and I have very much a wardrobe staple of mine and that is a cashmere basic and I haven't tried Mango's cashmere before. I felt it in store a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was really soft so I've just decided to give it a try. For me I very much live throughout the autumn winter seasons in basics like this. I know that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea but that's just my style and it's what I love. And this one does have, I want to call it a ladder, it's like a ladder stitching detail and it's around the seam. So it's around the arm section here and then it carries on over onto the back as well. So it is a nice little touch of detail and perhaps if you were looking for a basic that's not so basic then this might be a good option for you. So in terms of price this is $99.99. I actually think that's a really fair price for 100% cashmere and it does feel very, very soft. I avoid buying cashmere that does not feel soft, which is why I have my cashmere favorites, uh, but it does feel really, really nice. I'm wearing it in a size medium and there are actually five colors available in this one. So if perhaps you've already got a black and you just wanted to add another cashmere basic to your wardrobe for the season ahead, then it'd be worth checking out the other colors in this one. Now my next item is a shirt because during these kind of seasons if I'm not wearing some kind of knitwear like a cashmere basic then it's more than likely that I'll be wearing a shirt. So this is a quite oversized shirt like a boyfriend style. This colour is called caramel. <gasps> yes, who doesn't love a bit of caramel right? I mean it, it's brown. <laughs> It's brand, so if like me you're a neutral lover, I'm sure this would go down a treat. So it's 100% viscose, so it's really nice, and this is my viscose test. I just like the way that it moves, it's very, very fluid. I prefer viscose to polyester uh, for environmental purposes, among many other things, but I just prefer the feel, and I prefer how they wash. I just think they're much better quality as well, and I just think that they hang nicer. Um, so this is available in two other colours. It comes in like a black and white stripe, which is quite bold, but I like it. And also an off-white as well. I was a little bit tempted, I must confess, by the off-white colour because, as you can see, this is a longer line shirt. And actually, with a knit over the top, you can get that really nice layered look of the longer shirt and the shorter knit. And I just think that sometimes an off-white or as close to white as you can get long shirt is always a really good shout, especially when it comes to layering up for these cooler months. But it works really nicely if you know, you're like me and you live in jeans or if you work in an office or some kind of environment where you need to be a little bit smarter. And obviously it's just a jolly nice shirt. It's £29.99, so for 100% this goes, I think that's really good value for money. I've already washed this and it washes well as you can see. I've given it a bit of a steam so that's why it looks nice and slinky at the moment. And I have this in a size medium. Now that's tops done. I have one pair of denim to share with you guys and that is these. I actually wore these, well I've had these for a couple of weeks. No, maybe a month? I think I've had these for a month, um, but I've worn them solidly for the last two days. This has been my pair of jeans of choice. So I really hope there's no chocolate stains on here. Um, if you happen to see any little brown stains, I assure you it is chocolate. It's more than likely chocolate. So these are the Giselle jeans. They're high-waisted and they are a slim fit. They're really good denim. They're 99% cotton with 1% elastin. And I know 
that I have previously, I kind of go backwards and forwards with my denim. Sometimes I complain if it's got too much elastin, sometimes I like 100% cotton. 100% cotton would be like your typical 501 jeans. They're quite stiff, but in a proper denim kind of way. These I just find, because I've been traveling over the last couple of days, these I just find are really comfortable. They don't lose their shape and they just feel comfortable because you do have that very slight element of stretch in them. Now admittedly on me, these do come up a little bit cropped, especially for this time of year. Like I don't really like to have cropped jeans at this time of year, but we've had some relatively mild weather. Now, just for reference, I have an inseam of 34 inches. So this will depend on your own inseam, your own leg length. Now I've gone for these in dark blue just because we are obviously in a moodier time of year and the colours within my wardrobe are quite dark and neutral so I just think that slightly darker denim tends to be my preference but there are three other colour washes available as well. There's a black, a grey and a lighter wash blue. Right, I've covered all of my clothing items now. I've got a couple of pairs of shoes to share with you guys. And I have mentioned definitely over the course of me being on YouTube how much I do love mango shoes because they have quite a wide range of leather options. I personally, just in terms of comfort and breathability, prefer a leather shoe. And this year they have come out with, or this season in particular, they've come out with some really good styles. So this was initially the first pair of boots that I spotted on their website. It's a very standard um, Chelsea boot, which is a great wardrobe staple to have. If you watched my boots video that I did mention the Chelsea boot was a really good one to have. This one has a slightly squared toe, which I really, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a pigeon. It was a pigeon outside, but he came right up in the window. Anyway, as I was saying, they have a square toe, which I think for this season in particular is a really good little style point because the square toe is a very hot trend this year. But what I actually love most about these is that the heel kind of sticks off the back a little bit and that gives it a very premium, very designer look. There's a few footwear brands that are doing this kind of look who are designer footwear brands and I just think it makes them look just that little bit more expensive. They're a traditional Chelsea boot pull-on style. So if you have a high instep, it'd definitely be worth trying before you buy. But yeah, really, really beautiful. The only downside with these, now that I've just raved about them, I'm gonna be gutted if I can't get my size. I ordered these in a size 41 because I would usually take a size 41 in mango boots. Unfortunately, they've come up quite big and it feels like my feet are swimming in these. So I went online to see if I could get a 40 and alas, they are sold out. So I've signed up to that little email thing you can do where it, they will email you once that size comes in. So I am now just praying to the shoe gods that a size 40 will come in because these ones obviously I have not worn because they are too big. So that would probably be my little tip on size. I'm a 40 and a half, 41, so I would potentially size down in these because they are coming up a little bit big. And then my next pair of footwear, we're very black today, aren't we? <laughs> There's a lot of black being featured. I'm not gonna apologize, it's just because I tend to invest my money in things which are classic, which I'm gonna wear loads, because I think that's really important when you're kind of putting things in your wardrobe. That's to get things that you're gonna wear and wear and wear. Now these, these are black leather loafers. As you can see, they are completely plain. They call them moccasins on the Mango website, um, but it is, you know, a loafer. And these are actually more of the supple soft because I find that there's two different kinds of loafers. You get the very structured loafers that are quite stiff and structured and angular. And then you get loafers like this, which are really lightweight even though they're made from real leather. And the leather is incredibly soft and you can bend it this way and that way. Now I have the Gucci Brixton loafers, which I know I always talk about to you guys and I rave about them. And they obviously have the gold horse bit, but I do sometimes find myself, as much as I love that horse bit, I do sometimes find myself wanting to have a pair of loafers that are plain, that don't have that gold hardware on them. And that is precisely why I picked up these. Also, because I wanted another black loafer that I can wear 
alongside my Gucci loafers just because I feel like I'm wearing them a lot and I don't want to completely wear them out. So these are just my sort of slightly more subtle alternative, but again, really comfortable, really soft leather, the sort of loafers that you don't need to break in. And now that my feet are a little bit mm, worse for wear after running the marathon earlier this year, for me, shoes that you don't really need to break in, I've pretty much come top of my priority list. So these are super, super comfortable. Right guys, that's it from me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions about size, fabric, styling, whatever, pop me those down in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video, which will be on Wednesday next week. So I'll see you then. Bye.